normally when you go to a consulting firm uh, you know a partner or a director will meet you and understand uh, uh, understand the uh, requirement pass on the project to consultants working within the organization our model is different um, in that our partners they go and understand a requirement uh, but we don't have consultants of our own we normally go to very reputed large or boutique consulting firms and pull in subject matter experts to deliver those projects um we have about uh, 300 plus boutique consulting firms uh, in our ecosystem and uh, what we decided to do earlier this year is get about 70 of them and um uh, get them to collaborate to deliver, uh, deliver this web summit so it's a series of webinars and panel discussions that we're doing over 7 days uh, the big idea behind uh, behind this uh, summit Uh, was that um you know 2020 was a, supposed to be a really good year right it was the start of a decade everyone was really excited and obviously everyone knows after that covid hit us right um so in the initial period uh, uh you know what we tried to do was first we tried to help micro businesses and small businesses right and the the way we did that we set up something called the superheroes project where we got 700 business leaders from across the gcc to come in and uh, support these small businesses and micro businesses so we did that all of 2020 it's still a live platform that's still running um in 2021 we decided we have so much expertise within the ecosystem why don't we get it and also try to help larger businesses who've now started feeling the brunt and help them get back on track uh so uh, feel free to uh, you know attend any of the sessions during this discussion towards the end of this session we'll talk a little bit more about how you can attend some of the other sessions today's session is run by uh, vipul and jp uh, they both work at altometric uh, and they'll give quick introductions of themselves before they start their um, their part of the talk um during the session there will be a couple of giveaways so please look out for them uh, in the chat uh so for example we have a, a, a you know a talk tomorrow uh, uh you know which is done by uh, the ceo the chairman actually of uh of altometric who was us uh a us national uh, entrepreneur of the year evi entrepreneur of the year us national 2020 um so it's a paid talk but uh, we're giving away a few invites to that uh of course you have to fill a short form uh, uh you know and we have to uh, you know check eligibility and then we give you the invite so please look out for that giveaway uh, we're also giving away and that's around uh, the 30 minute mark is when we'll give that out uh, around the 45 to 50 minute mark uh, there's another giveaway um which is speakers right so if any of you want to become speakers in future web summits that we host um uh, then you're able to do uh, do that um uh, so look out for those in the chat um and i think that's about it from me uh, feel free to interact during the discussion you can unmute you can raise you know you can sort of raise hands and uh, you can ask your question or you can uh, uh, you can unmute yourself and ask a question as well during the discussion um so that's about it from me handing over to vipul and jp uh to take this forward thank you arun and uh, good morning good afternoon for all the people on the call i know they are from different time zones that you guys have joined uh, my name is vipul and uh, i have my uh, few of my colleagues here i have uh, jay prakash nair which you are seeing as jp in the screen and i have two three from organization we are going to present an interesting topic before that i'll introduce a few minutes about altimetric then i'll let jp introduce uh, himself and then i'll introduce myself and that uh, was three and then we'll go into the uh, presentation um altimetric uh, is a 8 year old organization focused on product engineering uh, and uh, focused on creating quick wins bite sized uh, wins focus towards a business outcome using our business platform right i know i used four five keywords but that's that's pretty much what we do we go with a practitioner mindset in terms of 
been there, done that. We all come from a product engineering background. So we understand how to do a product engineering. We understand what it takes for the business to be successful. Um, we do not uh, uh, recommend or we do not want to get into a large scale. Let's do this something for a couple of years and then see whether it works. No, we are in a, we are a company which is uh, focused on getting things done in a very short span of time to see business outcomes and then iterate over that. Uh, that's a very short nutshell. You will you will see much more details about Altimetric, how we have, uh, what we are doing, how we are grown in our uh, leaders' talk, in uh, which uh, Varun also referred to. Uh, we do have development centers across the uh, world. Uh, we have uh, uh, almost uh, 10, 12 uh, Fortune 500 companies, uh, which are there from a US point of view. But other than that, we have a big uh, impact in terms of uh, APAC customers also. Said that I'll request uh, Jay Prakash Nair to introduce himself and then uh, we'll introduce myself and Twister and then we'll get into the uh, topic of the day. JP. Yeah. <clears throat> thanks, uh, Vipul, um, and thanks, Varun, uh, for setting this up. Um, good morning, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Jay Prakash Nair, uh, JP for short, because uh, it's a long name. Um, um, I uh, take care of the analytics uh, department with an Altimetric. Um, I have ex experienced um, setting up uh, analytics centers of excellence in multiple multiple organizations. Um, been with the industry for um, around twenty five years now. Um, you know, if anybody is interested in more, knowing more, you know, please feel free to reach out to us. Um, but for the discussion today, we would really like to spend as much time as possible on the topic and the questions that you have. Um, so with that, uh, I will hand it back to Vipul so we can get started real quick. Yeah. Thank you, JP. So um, I'm, I'm here to uh, Jay Prakash Nair. I manage the data side of the business and all the, also all the APAC engagements uh, I take care of. I have Twas, uh, our uh, head of marketing from India. I have Sujata, who is the APAC business uh, leader here. Uh, and uh, in the interest of time, uh, JP, I'll share the deck and you can walk through, right? Um, let me go ahead and share it. OK, fine. Okay. Visible? Yes. Um, let me unshare this real quick because there's a video also that we need to play and I just want to make sure that the uh, speaker is shared. Real quick. One second. Still visible? Yep, we can see. Okay, thank you. Let's get started. Um, and again, you know, just like uh, Varun mentioned, uh, any questions, feel free to stop us. At the same time, we are not going to hog uh, the complete uh, time schedule for this. We will have time in the end for a free flow Q Q and A, uh, because we would definitely not like for this to be a monologue. Uh, but having said that, if there are some pressing questions that cannot wait till the end, feel free to stop us. Uh, we'll be happy to answer those questions. Yeah. So um, the topic obviously is, you know, um, how do we co-create uh, products with our customers and primarily with our customers, but with also uh, our field staff, right? Let's start with a use case, um, you know, instead of having a lot of theory, let's talk about uh, a use case and then we'll, we'll um, um, zoom in. So uh, let's assume that we are talking about uh, a company um, which is um, an apparel retailer, an end-to-end -end apparel manufacturer plus retailer, right? And um, let's say we are looking at a specific geography. It could be Japan, it could be US, it could be uh, GCC, whatever is the geography right now. Um, what is the first thing that comes to our mind when we talk about customer co-creation? Um, the first thing that typically comes to our minds is 
um, what exactly is our customer saying? Uh, that's the fundamental question that comes to our mind because if we want to build something that takes the customer feedback, then obviously we'll have to listen to that feedback first. Now, there are different avenues of listening to the feedback. We'll talk about that later, but at, at the outset, it's basically about listening to the customer first, um, understanding the queries, understanding the feedback, the complaints, the bouquets and brickbats, all of that stuff, and then incorporating that, having an engine that incorporates all of that uh, within our uh, product co-creation process, right? That's pretty much what the essence of uh, a product co-creation would be. So with that as, as, as a context, um, you know, let's say we are talking about an apparel retailer, excuse me, who obviously the manufacturer also so has control over the supply chain, the product design primarily, and uh, the entire, uh, you know, soup to nuts of, of that particular industry. So now, um, generally, when we talk about um, any data project, I just wanted to take a second to talk, to talk about what we, um, how do we go about uh, executing a data project and not just we as an altimetric and, you know, as an, an, as an industry person or a set of industry folks, how, how do we go about doing this, right? So the, the first step as we, or most of us know is uh, we pull in data from different data sources and put that in a centralized location. I do not want to use technical terms over here, but you know, you could call it a data lake, data warehouse, whatever that be. Um, you put that in a central location and then um, you cleanse it, make it, make sure that it is um, ready to be used. Otherwise garbage in, garbage out. So we cleanse it. And then um, we do two types of analytics on that. You know, one is the good old, uh, you know, business intelligence slash self-service BI slash uh, descriptive analytics using the tableaus and clicks and typical spot fires of the world. And then the other one is a little bit more nuanced, uh, more um, advanced analytics using the machine learning or AI engines of the world. So that's, that's pretty much it. Of course, the latter, that is the machine learning slash AI output will also um, be one of the streams which surface uh, with your uh, viz, visualization dashboards, uh, which you have created in tableaus and uh, clicks of the world, right? So, so that's pretty much uh, in, in a nutshell, as we walk from left to right, how we would typically handle a data project, right? bring the data together, make sure it's clean. That's an, very, that's a, uh, an often overlooked uh, area and a challenge that most companies have um, today. Um, as in even companies who have invested in uh, big data infrastructures of several years back, they're still grappling with uh, what is called data swamps as compared to data lakes, right? Where uh, the, the data is really muddy and not um, easy to be. So, so you, uh, we ensure that you know, the data is cleansed and then uh, the downstream analytics performed on that. That's a, in a nutshell, a very high level overview of how we would handle a data project. Now let's apply that same concept, same approach to the uh, use case at hand, right? Mm. How do we design as an apparel uh, manufacturer slash designer, how do we design, um, a, you know, a merchandise uh, using uh, the customer feedback or, or how do we co-create with the customer, right? So what we do is we take in data uh, starting from the left side of the screen. We take in data from uh, call centers um, you know, e-commerce websites, social media industry data stores, etc. Now, one thing that is worth noting over here is there are different segments of data, right? Different personas giving you this information. So the call center information is where, you know, obviously your customer is calling in with um, either, um, you know, complaint or some suggestion or whatever it is, and then that is recorded. So the personas involved over there are your end customer as well as your call center personnel. Then you have the e-commerce website wherein you know people like you and I, we go and buy stuff. And then if we like it, we put a comment over there. We don't like it, uh, we, we might put a comment over there. And sometimes you know we don't put any comment at all. So basically you have that end user uh, and the e-commerce engine being the personas over here because personas need not necessarily be human beings all the time, right? So that's the actors. Uh, those are the actors over here. Social media, again, 
This one is slightly different from the previous two. Typically, uh, the previous two would be your existing customers calling in, whereas social media is uh, different in that, you know, it could have a lot of your uh, quote unquote potential customers or consumers out in the wild uh, talking about different things, not necessarily just your products, but other products similar to yours, maybe competitors products or um, uh, similar genre of products and things like that, right? So that is a slightly different, um, you know, persona or market segment. And then you have, you know, industry data. So what is this industry data is where you have industry thought leaders, um, right? Uh, they, they have articles, publications, they have, they tweet a lot. Um, you know, they have messages on Instagram, they post pictures or color trends on Instagram, pattern trends on Instagram. You know, a few years back, in this context, um, the leopard pattern, right? You know, the leopard as in the animal, the leopard pattern was uh, popular for um, a while, for a few months, right? And that was uh, triggered a lot by the uh, industry thought leaders as well as the, um, the, the ramps and all those stuff, right? So that's the industry data. Now that is again, uh, that persona, that those set of actors are slightly different from the ones that we saw uh, above, right? And then stores, stores another set of uh, folks. Now stores, obviously your customers will come talk about stuff and some of the store folks will capture the feedback that's that's there. Over and above that, you get very valuable feedback, extremely valuable feedback from your store folks, store staff, right? Because, and their feedback would typically be sort of a summary feedback, right? You know, they hear a thing from three, four different customers, then they sense something, right? Because of their experience, because of the fact that they are on the shop floor, uh, you know, day in and day out. So they have some sense of what might be important. And they, uh, when they give the feedback, you know, it's, a, it's normally a pretty valuable feedback. So again, as we saw on the left-hand side, we just talked about one, two, three, four, five bullet points. And we saw how many different personas are in play. Uh, how many different types of sentiments could come in how many different types of uh, channels in terms of data, data channels that you might need to ingest and so on and so forth, right? So we take, we should, I mean, we take all of, all of that stuff, put that in a place and convert that into a single source of truth. Just by bringing all the data into one place, that doesn't automatically make it a single source of truth. You know, there are uh, things to be done to the data to, to make, get it to that stage. Um, one would be tying all the data together to, uh, ensure that you know uh, a similar category of products uh, reviews come together um, and um, the, tying the genres together, the tying the personas together, so on and so forth, right? And of course, the the basic cleansing of missing values, outliers, and stuff like that. So once all that is done and uh, the the attributes you have, and then um, you know you apply the algorithms and stuff like that, just like the way we discussed in the previous one. Now. One thing that I want you to once, you know, since I've explained this specific use case related stuff, I wanted to take a step back and tell you practically how this is implemented. We won't implement that from left to right. We typically implement that from right to left. What does that mean? Once the use case is identified, the domain, the micro domain, as well as the use case is identified, um, we define that as a problem statement. And then we walk backwards from right to left. We identify the key attributes that will help solve the problem statement, right? And then bring in just enough data from the different data sources to solve that problem statement. And this is where, um, you know, uh, this approach enables um, many companies to get business value from this kind of an exercise faster rather than having a very like a grandiose multi-million dollar two three year program for getting all the data in one place and then cleansing it and then you know moving forward with the analytics right uh, many companies have tried that and uh, businesses will wake up one day and definitely uh, wake, wake up is a, is a harsh word they'll they will they'll realize one day that you know it's been a while since we've been pumping money into this but We've, we are not seeing value out of this, right? And that's a genuine business concern that will come up someday, right? And um, that's the and that's where you know the the 
um, the funding for a grandiose big data lake project is throttled um, because you know there are more important things to be done if we are not getting business value out of it. So that's the whole um, you know it, it, it sort of goes into a bit of a chaotic phase. So that's the reason why what we suggest to customers is if you are um, a little late into the game, consider yourself lucky because you can learn from others' mistakes. And one of the mistakes is to have a very a large and grandiose multi-year program just to set up the data lake and cleanse it. Um, what we typically suggest is identify a bunch of use cases, closely related use cases, obviously, and then uh, identify the attributes, get just enough data for taking care of that and, uh, and then uh, execute it, get the business value, uh, make all the stakeholders feel that you know that something is happening in terms of uh, you know dirhams or dollars and then move on from there right so um that's the overall approach the design the architectural approach rather than uh, not not a static architecture itself um the now so here the core of this problem is you know we are getting data from call centers e-commerce social media industry data what is the common theme between all of these the common theme obviously is the nature of the data that we are getting. We are not getting data in neatly laid out uh, rows and columns uh, that you can pull into an Excel sheet or a database and um, run queries on top of that, right? You know, there is, um, the, the data is of a different format. It is unstructured data or free text data, right? And that's where the challenges start uh, cropping up their heads, right? So the problem of unstructured data is um, you know, one is the reviews from customers uh, and field staff, and this is just two personas. We saw many other personas, right? Typically in unstructured or free text format. Now, within one review, you could have multiple sentiments. Right? So, for example, um, you know, I like the blue shirt, but not the black one. Right? So, this is one review from the customer. But there are two aspects or two entities being talked about, blue shirt and black shirt. Right. The customer is saying, I like the blue shirt, positive sentiment. I do not like the black shirt, negative sentiment. So there are two sen different sentiments attached to two different keywords in one single review. So you really, you can't attach a sentiment to that entire review. You have to attach sentiments to the individual uh, aspects or keywords which are being talked about. Right. So the challenge really becomes how do we extract the individual aspects and sentiments and intents or context and large corpus of unstructured feedback. Now, um, you know, we as human beings, beings are tuned to this, you know, we read a review, we get it, right? We, we, we get what is being said, what is being said between the lines, what's the spirit of what is being said, is there a sarcasm involved? All of that stuff, we, we get it, right? But then um, if we have to do it across, you know, thousands or possibly even millions, of uh, such reviews, how do we how do we do that? You know, it has to be done by the engine. Right? By human beings, it's not just scalable. So the key challenges with this kind of an exercise is, and this is a little nuanced. You know, if again, you know, if um, uh, it's not very clear, we can talk about this at length. But this is something that we need to understand. One is the extracted keywords should be relevant, right? You know, less false positives because. If your engine, uh, automated engine, is pulling keywords, saying, you know, these are the keywords, you know, it should all be relevant because you don't want, um, you know, um, any irrelevant keywords to come in the shortlist and sort of muddy the output results. So you don't want false positives, right? That's one. And the next one is the reverse of it. All the relevant keywords should be extracted. Right. And this this is what makes it tricky. It's a it's a seesaw effect, right? So if let's say to meet the first point, the extracted keywords should be relevant. You do um, to ensure that you know you you make the engine very tight. That is only if the engine is very confident, extremely confident of the relevance of that keyword, pull it. Otherwise, leave it back, right? But then if we do that, then we are not satisfying the second point because we are leaving some important words back in the bucket where you should we should have extracted that so keeping both these points satisfied is really the core of the problem 
in any unstructured anal data analysis, right? How do we reduce the false positives as well as false negatives? These are, are little technical terms, but even if you keep that aside and just look at the two um, sentences mentioned over here, the extracted keywords should be relevant, meaning whatever you extract, they, it has to be relevant and whatever is relevant needs to be extracted. Both these are two sides of the same coin and that is what makes it uh, challenging, right? It's a CSR effect. You try to fine tune one, the other, uh, you're, you're compromising a bit on the other side. How do we strike a fine balance between these two, right? And that's the reason why this, this whole affair of natural language understanding, um, NLU is basically, we all understand different natural languages and that's not this what this NLU means. It's about the machine understanding the languages, right? So this natural language understanding by machines is um, is considered to be uh, an AI hard or AI complete problem. It is not yet a completely solved problem in the industry, right? Although any you just type in sentiment analysis in Google or any of your favorite search engines, you will get you know millions of hit results um, because that's being talked about a lot and all that. But it is uh, not yet a fully solved problem in the industry, right? Okay, so what's Vox? Um, I'll quickly introduce Vox and then um, you know we'll, we'll try to wrap this up real quick. Uh, what's Vox? It's an NLU engine, natural language understanding engine from Altmetric. The full form is voice of X. What is X? X is, voice is the feedback and X could be, is a variable, right? And that's why intentionally I've used, we've used the X variable over here. Uh, could be customers, staff, suppliers, doctors, nurses, anybody, any of your stakeholders um, whom you feel can provide valuable feedback on your product uh, is, is X. That's, that's as simple as that, right? So that's what Vox is. Now, let me uh, you know, run this video real quick. It's not a long one, I promise you. It's, and after that, we'll, we'll talk about a few more other um, a couple of other use cases, and then uh, we'll wind up for questions. Now, please let me know if you can hear the volume. Um, make it full. How does your customer feel about your product? Is that audible? Can somebody pull or somebody yeah, can hear? Yes, yes, perfect. Okay, yes, perfect, yes. perfect. Okay, great. Let's go forward then. How does your customer feel about your product? There are several tools out there that analyze reviews and toss out answers. But if only we humans could be that simple. Take these two shirts. Our customer Kevin selects the blue shirt and not the black one. Let's see what happens when Kevin's review is analyzed by a popular AI tool. Wait! That doesn't seem right. It didn't pick up the keyword, nor the sentiment. Let's look at another engine. Wow, that's weird. Both keywords are missing completely, making the sentiment irrelevant. Here are the results. Was that the true result? And can we use it to make impactful decisions? High-level aggregates that completely miss out on deeper sentiments of product differentiation and variety can often result in misleading decisions. If this is just with one review, what happens when this multiplies into the tons of data sources your business generates? This is a tough problem for AI, but you already know that. Enter a solution by Altimetric voice of X. Vox comes powered with two layered designs. While layer one picks up on keywords by filtering through the semantic hierarchy, layer two makes sure you get better results by acting as a catch-all bucket. Vox seeps deeper into your customer sentiments and variation in their words and phrases. The true voice that drives your demand is currently hidden. Hidden in dark data that currently makes up for over 80% of enterprise data. 
Vox is here to help you find the missing unknown by understanding human sentiments better. So, would you like to learn more? Let's connect. Right. Um, so we do have a couple of slides more and I want to bring up a few more other contexts uh, just so we can round off this uh, discussion and then we can take uh, a lot of questions. Um, now, this is what we saw is basically an apparel industry, right? So one question that might pop up in our minds is, um, that's fine, I think we get it, but then um, is there another example where this can be applied so the, the understanding can be a little bit uh, more, uh, a little better, right? So let's take the example of a, a packaged food company. Um, let's say this company makes yogurt, right? Curd or yogurt. And um, how can a yogurt manufacturer fine tune uh, their product offerings because yogurt, as we all know, it's not this, just the plain Greek uh, white yogurt, but then there could be different types of yogurts, right? So how do we um, you know, fine tune that based on the customer uh, input? Uh, the first step obviously is to gather initial insights and this can be a very involved exercise because A, um, what are the customers preferring nowadays and what's the industry trend? For example, is there more talk or chatter about gluten-free in the market going on, right? In the, the free unstructured text, um, is there a lot of discussion about gluten-free uh, or more antioxidants um, and you know, things like that, right? These are just two examples where, what exactly is the market talking about nowadays? And what the, where's, where is the trend going? Is it likely to increase? Is, is that concern of let's say gluten-free or whatever, is, is it likely to increase? So that's one thing. Second thing is, you know, are there preferences within a region, you know, um, uh, a demographic preference or a regional preference or a gender-based preference or whatever. These are different slicing and dicing parameters, right? So that's the second um, you know, insight that we will need to take. And can you produce a small amount of the new product and do a bit of a cannery testing, right? And a cannery in a coal mine kind of a testing, right? Where you uh, produce something and just see if, you know, what's the feedback like? Because there's nothing like actual feedback on the ground also after your hypothesis. Right, you know, it's like testing your hypothesis. Um, does the new product need a large change in the supply chain and production process? You know, that's another thing um, that you might need to be a little uh, pay your cognizant of. And are there additional risks for the brand reputation if you go with the new products? You know, what if uh, that calls for using some ingredient which is a little controversial in the market in the industry? Then do we really want to go down that path and things like that? So many different perspectives. So many. Once we have, and this is just a representative set of you know questions that we would need to ask ourselves as a yogurt company when we are trying to launch a new product right and then do a beta test of the co-created product and then scale up right that's pretty much what the, the this thing is and of course you know this includes the feedback from our customers that we saw earlier all those things that we saw earlier you know if there is a call center and there are feedbacks coming on coming in through that all of that is part of this exercise right so that's one thing so that's sort of taking that context of applying um, uh, unstructured data reviews and into a totally different domain, which is this uh, packaged food uh, industry. Now let's take uh, a couple of questions. I want to preempt our discussion, open flow discussion with a couple of questions and then we can, we can expand out from there. So one is what are the broad categories of reviews that can be used? Right, you know, one is we saw it could be internal reviews, voice of staff, voice of customers. I say customers as internal because you know customers are part of your portfolio, right? It's an it's from that perspective, it's internal, right? As against uh, external, which is more of um, market trend in the wild. Consumers like your existing customers who are not yet your existing customers, you know, potential customers, if you will. Right, so voice of external experts, industry thought leaders, and so on and so forth. We saw a lot of these in the past in, in, in our uh, session early on. Now, the second second question is: Is this approach confined to products, as in you know CPG or an FMCG industry? The answer is no. We can extend this to the services industry also. For example, healthcare, like a hospital chain. Right, so imagine that you are part of a hospital chain. 
um, void. And the, the nurse is a very, very important stakeholder who is on the ground and has typically has a lot of feedback uh, coming in from the, uh, from the patients. And, uh, fr um, you know, it could, it need not be just about the medical treatment. The other day we were interacting with the hospital and they wanted to really, they were actually implementing music therapy for some of their cancer patients, right? So they, they uh, you know, the, these kind of feedback, either it's from the industry journals um, by subject matter experts, or it could be from the patients themselves, right? So this, this is a treatment-based, um, you know, feedback. The other one is, um, you know, more in terms of, you know, the syringes supply, the medicine supply, you know, you know, we have the medicines in stock, but the syringes are running out or vice versa, the other way around, right? You know, um, you know, right now all over the world, COVID vaccinations are going on, right? You know, there are certain instances where the medicines have run out, although people are sitting there for the vaccine. So all these things, right? A lot of this Again, a nurse is a very, very important stakeholder who can provide this feedback, not just to the uh, doctors themselves, but also to the, um, the admin staff, the procurement staff, and so on and so forth, right? So if you we, if we have a very simple mechanism, again, the keyword is simple. It cannot be a very elaborate form that they have to pay, they have to fill up uh, every now and then, in which case, you know, they, A, even if they somehow start it, it will fizzle away. We all know that, right? Because they have more important things to do, which is taking care of the patients, right? So um, likewise, every role in the industry have a primary day job, which they are responsible for. So filling up elaborate forms is not one of them necessarily, right? So how do we make it very simple? It could be just, you know, some sort of a voice recorder capturing that and we convert the voice into text and analyze it as elementary or as simple as that, right? So. That's, that's pretty much um, what we had today. Like I said, we do not want to belabor this or we do not want to have, you know, put a lot of um, heavy stuff out there, content out there, or overload overwhelm uh, with a lot of content. But we would like to open up the floor now for uh, questions uh, while we have uh, around 20 minutes left. I think the last few minutes, uh, Varun, uh, you might want for um, some wrapping up stuff. So maybe the next 10 minutes or so, we can open up for questions. Hi, this is Seppo from, from CyberMind for, for this presentation. I, I, I like it really, really interesting. Huh? Uh, one, one detail question, you, you were talking about this, uh, the sentiment analysis and, and how it fails when uh, when they are kind of different product categories. So basically, I didn't catch what, what's your approach, how, how to handle that kind of situation. So it, it, is it like listing the products for the for the analysis and, and using that? Or is there some other way to deal with that issue? Uh, the issue of different products, you mean? Yeah, the blue and black shirt that, that you were using as an example. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. Good. And I'm sorry, I didn't did not catch your name. Um, you said Se Seppo. Said okay. Yeah. Seppo. Let me stop sharing so I can see your name on the screen. Um, okay. Can you see it now? <laughs> yeah. Please, please talk once again. <laughs> yeah. Can you see it now? Okay, perfect, Seppo. Okay, yeah. Nice to meet you, Seppo. Okay, great. So, um, yeah, good question. Um, so, so if I understand uh, th that question right, and I, th there are different pieces, there are different nuances of that question also. So I will try to address it. If your exact question is not getting addressed, please, uh, you know, ask me uh, that again. So um, the blue shirt versus black shirt are, two different aspects of the shirt product, right? So now um, let's dig a deeper into that industry. So you have a general category of products, let's say uh, male or female or kids, right? So that's a broad department or category of, and then within that, uh, let's say for um, 
um, for kids products. Um, let's say you have, um, um, you know, shirts, right? Now shirts uh, could be long sleeve shirts uh, or could be, you know, uh, things like that, right? So long sleeve shirts or different. Yeah, yeah, I understand that there, there, are, there are product variations and stuff like that. And if you are talking about kind of major retail store, you might have hundreds of thousands of products uh, yes. and, and then you would have, have, have to multiply that by, by some thousands to get all the variations if it comes to that level that there are colors and stuff like that. So I, I see that this is really multidimensional problem and that's why I'm, I'm kind of curious that how to handle that. It's not only by list, listing the products. Yes, absolutely. So you have that um, tree structure of your products all the way up to the SKU, the SKU level. Right now, the SKU could be you have the same product, but uh, you have a different color. That's a separate SKU for the same product, or you have a different size. That's a separate SKU for the same product. So you have that complete tree structure. Now the question is, well, now I'm getting these reviews. How do I connect these reviews to a certain product? Because end of the day. I do not want uh, feedback about one product going into the feedback about another product. For example, uh, let's say you know blue color might be good for a good product uh, for one product, but may not be good for another product, right? So how do I actually connect all these things? And that is where um, you the the data capture point, and you know we talked about the data cleansing uh, right at the beginning. That is where the connecting the reviews to the right product is is extremely crucial. Now, uh, is that, if you don't have that, is that the end of the world? Not really, um, but the fine-tuned uh, results uh, would become a little bit more coarse, uh, you know, at a higher level of tuning, right? So, for example, when you go to an e-commerce website to buy the product, you know, you have reviews against that product, which is also against that SKU or SKU also, for example, that color, is the customer may say this color doesn't suit this product, right? Or I was really looking for a particular size. Um, looks like they don't even stock that size for this particular product. Wonder why? You know those kind of reviews which come in. So then you capture those reviews and then you can easily tie that to what product the customer is talking about. And then when you analyze the reviews, it becomes in the context of that product. Right, and that's an, another important point that we need to bring over here is uh, a little bit of the master data of that product. Right, I'm not talking about um, an all-out grandiose master data management program. I'm talking about a very, very lightweight, you know, master data enablement or reference or lookup data enablement. For example, if you have product A, right, and there are certain attributes of the product A. Right, the material or the pattern or whatever it is. You have certain attributes of the product A. When the reviews come in, and this is important, suppose, when the reviews come in, um, they don't necessarily describe the attributes, right? Most of the reviews that you get in would be, would not have anything about the attributes. They'll just say, I like the color, right? But what color is, is it? Well, that has to come from the master data defined for this product, right? At the same time, sometimes the customer may say, oh, the pink color doesn't work well for this one. The blue color works better or whatever it is, right? So sometimes the, um, the keywords, the attributes would be present. Sometimes the attributes would need to be inferred based on the product attributes, which is where a little bit of master data cleaning up would need to be done at the um, single source of truth stage. Right? So it's a combination. The solution to the, the problem that you mentioned is a real one. Right? It's a real problem in the industry. The solution is not a silver bullet, obviously. You need to bring in two, three different uh, solution approaches, combine together, and then get the results. Does that make sense, Apo? Yeah, sorry, trying to find the unmute button. So yeah, yeah, it, it makes sense. And I, I, was, I was thinking, different times and also of this problem because when I'm a customer and I say that I bought bought blue, blue shirt from, from your store and, and it, I don't like the shirt. <laughs> uh, and and then, then 
I mean, basically, the color is not the problem, but but the shirt as as such is is lousy, and I don't like it. So it's so multidimensional problem, and I have been thinking about that in in some cases, and uh, and I, yeah, I feel yeah. that it, it's really tricky to solve that that purely by by using the sentiment analysis, and even the product structure doesn't mean anything because as customer I might not be interested or aware of your product structure I just kind of reflect that uh, in an irrational way so that I will confuse the analysis great great point a very good uh, insightful point there and that's the reason why um, I had so in the right in the beginning I had mentioned sentiments and intents also I don't know if you recollect. Um, let me just open that and we can, we'll talk about that because that's the point that you just brought up is very, very important. Um, so let me share this screen real quick. Right um, here. Right, let's skip to all these. So you have the aspects here. I, I hope my screen is, is visible. So we have the aspects here, the sentiments tied to that, and the intents or context, right? What you just mentioned is the context. Is the context the color or is the context the product, overall product itself, right? You know, just tying the sentiments to the aspects is one part of it. Also pulling out the context and making sure that, okay, uh, you know, uh, whether it's, it's it's the, the feedback is for the color or for the overall product. You know, that con extraction of the context becomes part of that. So absolutely, uh, Seppo, that you know, what you just said is, um, is a, definitely a valid problem in the industry. And that is where an, a multifaceted engine like this, which does not just extract the keywords, but also the sentiments and also the, the context or intent behind that particular uh, review. Uh, you need to have that multidimensional or multifaceted engine like this uh, to take care of uh, it. Again, I will uh, not by any stretch of imagination say that this is 100% accurate because there is no engine out there which is 100% accurate. But, uh, you know, this is this takes care of those multidimensional aspects that you just mentioned. Yes. Does that, uh, yeah. Yeah, thanks. Thanks. That's good. Okay. Sounds good. Um, any other questions? That th those are a couple of excellent questions from Seppo. Thanks for that, Seppo. So, um, if anyone does have any questions, you could also just um, type it in the chat box, and we can answer it as well. So, Sneha, I see a lot of chat. Um, Okay, I think these are not questions. Okay, okay. Okay, sounds good. I was wondering if there are any questions hidden in this chat. Uh, uh, no, JP not Sujata here. JP Sujata here, there was one question I've answered on the chat and he'll get in touch with us directly. That's about Okay, that. okay. Sounds good, sounds good. So I'll also be sharing the um, contact information for Whipple and JP. So if any, at any point, anyone does have any questions or thoughts that they want to share. Um, so, you know, you could just directly uh, email them as well. 